everybody and welcome back to Angie Saves Pockets. So as you've read from the title today, I'll be making a fashion mask. This will be more so for a fashion purpose and also slightly a social distancing purpose rather than an actual medical grade or surgical mask. I decided to create a mask that maybe will not protect me um, from a health standpoint since we need to make sure that all the materials to make masks and all of these surgical grade masks go to nurses and doctors who actually need them. So I have already prototyped the mask um, when I was testing out my pattern. One thing that I noticed uh, while fitting my prototype on me is that in the current pattern that I have, I need to add some sort of metal to the top so I can shape it around the nose. I also want to raise the design by half an inch because I feel it's a little low on the mask. With that, I also want to reduce the size on the top. As you can see, it's a little high here on my nose. Um, so if I lower it down by a quarter of an inch, it'll fit better under my eyes. Yep. Yeah. So with those things to keep in mind to fix about the pattern and the disclaimer out of the way, let's get started with the mask. So as I said when I described my prototype, I've already come up with a pattern for the mask. Um, this was my first attempt um, when I made it and I have already gone ahead and copied down the old pattern onto a new slip of paper with further instructions um, as well as done the small adjustments that I needed to do that the first mask was kind of lacking in. Um, the way I came up with my pattern initially, just so you know that my process a little better, I took a sheet of paper and I lay it over my face and then I darted the paper in on the bridge of my nose, under my chin, and then on my sides. Then I took those markings and I marked out my piece of paper where those fell. Then I copied this onto my muslin fabric. As you can see my lines here, I went ahead and did the embroidery and then I cut out a second sheet to act as my uh, back. Sewed them together where I had it fit it on my face, figured out the length of the elastic, which by the way I also uh, made a guide for. After fitting it over my face, determined the areas that needed fixing, and that's where the new and improved pattern came from. If you want to see a detailed instructional video of exactly how I constructed the pattern for this mask, go ahead and comment below and I can make that for my next video. If there is also interest, I can also scan the pattern with a ruler and upload it online, so that way you can um, easily download it if you just want to go ahead and use the pattern that I have here that I've made for myself. So just let me know what you all want in terms of the pattern, otherwise I'm just going to go ahead and get started with making the mask for this video. So to start off I'm going to be using a black woven fabric, interfacing for the backing of this to give it more structure, stabilizer for the filter of the mask, an embroidery hoop, some black thread, red embroidery thread and a black bobbin. So I'm going to start off by cutting out the interfacing because I'll be applying it to the fashion fabric before I cut out the fabric. This way I can have both pieces exactly the same size. And then using a water soluble pen, I'm going to go ahead and trace around my pattern. I'm going to go ahead and take my ruler and draft out all of my markings, starting with the um, center line for the embroidery. To make sure that when I'm cutting it out the pattern doesn't get shifted, I'm going to go ahead and pin the pattern down just along the edges and some of the more curved or sharper corners. I'm going to go ahead and cut the interfacing out. I'm also going to go ahead and transfer the markings onto the other side so I can see them there too. And with that I have my interfacing cut out and marked and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the stabilizing fabric as well and then we're going to attach the interfacing to the fashion fabric. So I'll see you in a moment. I'm going to take my interfacing. I'm going to line it up as close to the edges as I can. I have my iron on the hottest setting. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press my iron down very firmly onto the interfacing to activate the glue particles. Make sure to press the iron and not actually iron the interfacing on because if you iron it and shift the iron around, it can move the interfacing and spread the glue out in a weird way. So to make sure that it is bonded as nice and flat as possible, you need to make sure that you're picking up the iron and pressing it down on every single curve and corner that the interfacing has. To make sure that it's glued on, just go ahead and gently wipe your finger along the edge of the interfacing and if it comes apart that means it's not glued down but if it doesn't that means it is and it looks like I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead 
grab my scissors and I'm going to cut this out with the fabric following the interfacing as a pattern. So now that I have my black fabric and the interfacing attached together, I realized I had drawn my guidelines on the wrong side of the interfacing on the glue side, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer these over super quick. So now that I have everything marked out, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my embroidery hoop. And I will also use a scrap piece of stabilizer to actually stabilize this piece. This will not be the filter that I marked out that'll be going onto the back of the mask. This is an extra piece and I'll actually be cutting it down to size where the embroidery design will go. So I popped it in, I'm gonna take my guide, I'm gonna just make sure that everything is lined up and I notice that this side is a little high, so I'm just gonna bring it down to the smallest fit. I'm gonna check it here and that's all lined up perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up my hoop and my mask is ready to be embroidered on. So now here at the embroidery machine, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the file that I saved when I did my stitch out on the prototype. I'm gonna line it up to that center line, put my foot down and start my embroidery. Now that I have the word stitched out, I'm gonna go ahead and shift the mask over so I can get both of the crosses in as well. So now that the embroidery is done, I can take it off the hoop and I'm gonna take some sharp embroidery scissors and just clean up the embroidery here so we don't have these strangler um, little threads here. Now that I have all the embroidery done, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down the embroidery stabilizer in the back so it fits closer to the design so it's out of the way. And then we can go ahead and start putting the mask together. With my machine changed out so I can do a straight stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on all of these darts. So I'm gonna fold these up, make sure that both ends of the darts line up, and don't forget to back stitch. And now you can see my mask starting to take its shape. Now with both pieces sewn down, it is time to attach them together. Attach them right sides together, make sure that all of the mess is on the outside for both pieces. And I'll actually begin from the center point here because I wanna make sure it lines up. Um, so I'm gonna lift up my needle, set this down, and then go ahead and stitch both these together. And then I'm also gonna do something different on the top than I will on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch down um, on the inside as close to the edge as possible. This way I'm gonna be creating a bit of a casing into which I'm gonna be sticking my jewelry wire so I can adjust the top of it around the bridge of my nose. Now that I have this casing sewn into the top, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my jewelry wire and I'm gonna stick it through. I also went ahead and marked out four and a half inches, which is the length of this wire, so I can sew it down to ensure that the wire doesn't move after it's in. So I'm just gonna pry open my seam here and I'm just gonna, you know, force it through. And with that, we now have a wire in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch down the other side. And with that, both of my pieces are attached together. I'm gonna go ahead and from these sides, pull it all through. I will go ahead and um, off camera, really quickly take my iron and press all of the seams flat. And then we can meet here to uh, roll up the sides and attach the elastic. So after ironing it flat, this is what my mask looks like from the outside and this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, so now it's time to do the last step, which is adding the elastic. So taking my mask elastic guide, I'm gonna go ahead and take some black elastic, line it up and cut it out to size right here. Cut my second piece. Then using a little bit of fire, I'm gonna go ahead and seal the edges. This will prevent the elastic from fraying. And now that my elastic is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and sew down the sides of my mask, folding it over about a half an inch and then another half an inch. So it makes this nice little loop here. And then I'm gonna insert my elastic on the inside and then sew it down. So now that this is sewn down, I'm gonna take my elastic, attach it to the sides and taking a needle and some thread, I'm gonna sew the two down. You can also do a little bit of a strength test once you sew a couple stitches down to see how secure it is. And as you can see here, it's pretty secure. So I'm just gonna go over two more times just as a safety precaution. And now I'm gonna tie off my thread and I'm gonna move the elastic over so that this is hidden on the inside. Trim down some extra threads. And now it's time to attach the elastic on the other side. And with the elastic on both sides, the mask is done. Time to put it on. And with that, the 
thank you all so much for watching. Again, just as I stated in the beginning, um, this is not a surgical grade mask. I am not using materials, nor did I buy any materials to make these masks. I am using all materials of things I've already owned. This mask is more so for a fashion slash social distance uh, statement rather than a medical grade mask that you can use as a nurse doctor. I hope all of you out there stay healthy and safe and I will see all of you lovelies in my next video. Bye!